if you've been in the federal market for a long time, right, as a government contractor, you've probably heard multiple times people telling you that success requires relationships. Uh, I say it all the time too, right, is that you must establish and maintain relationships with federal agency buyers and other government contractors supporting your target agency. The problem is most people don't tell you the how of it, right? They just tell you to have relationships, but they leave the whole how of it out. How do you start relationships? How do you build relationships? And how do you maintain relationships? So today I wanna to talk to you about that. I wanna give you tips for building strong relationships in the federal market centered around three core points. Think win-win, relationships are built, not found. They'll share when you care. So those three points I'm gonna talk about. If you wanna improve relationships in the um, federal market, if you wanna improve your relationship building skills, then do me a favor, just put in the chat, relationships matter. Let me know that that's what you're here for. That's what you wanna learn and we will get started. I'll, I'll uh, go down that path with you. If you don't know who I am, my name is Neil McDonald. I'm the president of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce and I wanna welcome you to my daily federal sales training where I teach sales tips for success in the federal market. I spent 20 years as a small business owner in the federal market. And since 2018, I've been teaching people like you that government contracting is not a secret, it's just a process. When we follow the process A to Z, we're going to have predictable and repeatable results. And that's what I want for you. That's why I do this training. Before we get started, do me a favor, like some of you have already done, help buyers remember who you are. Put your company name into the chat with two or three keywords that describe your core competency. Also, grow your network by engaging with others on LinkedIn uh, in this community, right? I'll do the training, but the chat is your community. So engage with others in there, either now or after the training, come back and see who was there and engage with them. Say, hey, I was on Neil's training as well. I'd love to connect and uh, see if there might be a reason for us to keep you know, starting and building a relationship. Um, if you're on YouTube, Facebook, et cetera, keep using those, but please come over to LinkedIn and connect with me. Connect with the others that are in the community. It's a great uh, community of GovCon people, government contracting people that uh, you might value building relationships with. One last thing, as we get started, I'm going to talk about um, how to start and build relationships right within the federal uh, with federal buyers. And I'm going to take a different angle today than I've taken before. But tell me what agency and try to just limit it to one. But what agency you wish you could build stronger relationships with today? Just put that in the chat. What agency would you want to build stronger relationships with um, today? Thank you for engaging on the chat. I can see a lot of you engaging over there. I'm not looking at the chat right now, but I'll come back in a minute uh, as we go along. But it's great to see you engaging because that's your community. Okay, so let's talk about um, the first point I want to mention, right? Think win-win. There's a great line from this guy, Edwin Markham, about... Um, doing unto others as you want them to do to you. He says, we've committed the golden rule to memory. Now let's commit it to life, right? Let's commit it to action. Let's actually start living what we believe. Building relationships requires us to think about others first and you, right? I also want you to think about yourself, but it begins with thinking about the other person uh, as you go forward, or at the very least, making sure you're thinking about the other person. And that's what I want to dive into in this idea of think win-win. Stephen Covey um, wrote a book called The Seven Habits for Highly Effective People. Boom, there you go. This is hands down my number one book. Uh, if you read no other book that I recommend, read that one. Uh, but it's Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits for Highly Effective People. Uh, habit four, he talks about win-win. And within that habit, he describes the six ways relationships can go. And I wanna walk you through um, what those six ways are so that you can see what the right ways are and what the wrong ways are, right? The ways that'll lead you to success and the ways that'll lead to no success or actually problems, right? So the first way is win-win. Win-win is this idea that it's mutually beneficial. I win, you win, right? That's really important. And to me, this is where I like that great line from Markham talking about the golden rule, right? Do unto others as you would have them do to you. Well, I want you to return my call. So I'm going to return your call. Things like that, right? It, it doesn't have to uh, go really far out there in, this, in these radical ways of thinking, how can I do unto others as I want them to do to me? If I want to write meeting minutes or I want you to write me meeting, meeting minutes, then I'm going to do it. I said engage with the people in this community, right? I want to build relationships with, with Jim and um, with Antonio and others in here, Shabira, right? I want to build relationships with you. Well, if I want you to make introductions for me, 
then I'm going to make introductions for you. If I want you to make introductions without any kind of constraint, like, hey, I'll make an introduction as long as you let me get a piece of the action, right? If I want, if I just want you to give me the introduction with no strings attached, then I should be making uh, introductions with no strings attached. That's the idea of do unto others, right? And when you bring it back to win-win, it's this idea of thinking about if we're going to have a deal, either a relationship deal where we're going to keep working with each other, then I need to make sure you're winning and making sure I'm winning, right? Of course, I hope you think the same way, but really I can only control my actions. And then in a contractor, if you think about uh, from a contract standpoint, it should be mutually beneficial with teaming partners. If I'm building relationships with teaming partners in my target agency, I want to make sure that they're getting out of the opportunity what they would consider a win, what their colleagues would consider a win, while at the same time taking care of uh, my company. So the first way a relationship can go is win-win. That sounds like a no-brainer, right? In fact, if it is a no-brainer, put win-win into the chat. Just let me know you're following along with that. The second way a relationship can go is win-lose. Um, so if I win, you lose. That's what it means. I'm going to win, you're going to lose. This is totally okay if you're in a foot race or a boat race or something, right? A race, if you have a winner, you've got a loser, right? What we call a second place person is a loser, not a winner, right? And I say that softly, but that's okay to have a win-lose relationship because that's the way games are played. I taught my son chess last night and I said, look, you're going to be losing for months. Until, I, until you start playing more and until you start learning better, I'm just older and more experienced. You're going to lose, but that's fine because that's how you get better. But in chess, there is one winner and one loser. Totally okay, win, lose. And eventually, hopefully, we'll switch it and I lose, he wins. I'm never throwing a game, by the way. Um, but in a relationship, it's a horrible thing. I win and you lose, um, that's not good at all. That's not healthy, but it'll also eventually make my win be less and less valuable to my uh, company and to myself. I think I've got a great uh, relationship with you, but then I realized, no, I'm just winning and you're losing and you're getting disgruntled or you're not really giving me stuff, are you going away? Well, then how am I really winning if you are losing? So the second way a relationship can go is win-lose. That's bad. Third way a relationship can go is lose-win. So let's reverse this now and you win, but I lose, right? That's not good. And it tends to happen with people who are, um, uh, who are afraid of offending or, uh, you know, exerting themselves to the other party. Small businesses often do this. I've done training where I say, you are not a small business. We go in with almost this inferiority complex of you're a large company and I'm a small, or you're the federal government and the agency and I'm a small. No, you're a subject matter expert and the agency and the large would hire you in a second as one of their senior leaders. So if they would hire you, why are you less than if you're in a small business? You're not. And, but we tend to sometimes go into this relationship thinking, well, I need to do whatever I can to keep the government happy. That, that large prime, I need to keep them happy. No, they need to make sure you're happy and you need to make sure they're happy. That's called win-win. But when it's a lose-win, you think you're doing them a favor. But what you're doing is establishing a relationship on weak ground. It will not be able to grow. The, the, the bigger the relationship goes, the more it'll fall over because it started with a weak foundation of lose-win. And so another one that's no good there is lose win. Uh, the fourth one on the way relationships can go are lose lose, right? In this case, and this is a this is theoretically one of the worst ones in my opinion. Um, well, I guess it's factually my opinion, but uh, lose lose worst way. If I lose, you're gonna lose. That's how I'm approaching a relationship. If I can't win, nobody's gonna win. If I can't have this office, no one can have this office. That's just the only way that can happen is if both parties are complete dopes, right? If they both are completely just jerks and mean people that you're okay with destroying somebody else if you can't uh, win. And I, and I don't like to go too far into the like political or personal, but if you think about a divorce, for example, sometimes that happens is all of a sudden the two parties are lose-lose. If I can't have the car, zzz, I'm going to cut it in half and no one can have it. It's like, you're crazy. What do you guys say? And it could be either parties, right? So I'm not picking sides. I'm just saying... That's horrible. It's destructive and it's no good. And it certainly is not going to allow you to build relationships. So when you think about lose-lose, if you've got any inkling towards that, either being that person or you experiencing that person, walk away because it's a bad one. Lose-lose. The next one, which seems like it might be good, but it's not, is win, right? So there's win-win, win-lose, lose-win, lose-lose. And now the fifth one is win. 
And this one is um, where I'm thinking about winning and I don't care whether you win or whether you lose. I just want to win at all costs. And I don't even care whether you lose. Win loses, I want you to lose so that I can win. That's a zero sum game where I think that you must lose in order for me to win. But I'm actually thinking about you. With win, I'm just thinking about myself. I'm just coming in saying, I just want to win. That's all that matters. I want to win this contract at the best price, at the least requirements with the government. So they're stuck with a deal, you know. Um, this relationship here, I'm going to get 80% of the teaming agreement and you get 20 or 10%. I've won. I don't even care about you. I got mine. And that's what win is really about, right? It's thinking I got mine. That's not good. That's almost as bad as lose, lose, right? Lose, lose is destructive, but win is just completely um, another one of those ways a relationship can go that will build a foundation that is weak and the relationship will topple over. The last one, which is a good one, um, if you have to take it, is no deal, no relationship. Sometimes you can't find a common ground where you both can win, but it's important that you both win. Win-win is the way to go, right? And so in this case, if you can't find a way to work together, maybe you're competitors and you thought you could work together, but really you're just competing too much. It's like, you know what? We're not going to be able to find a winning crown. Let's just walk away. I wish you well. You wish me well. And we walk away. Similar type thing with the government. Maybe you just can't help them because there's no fit in there. A no deal is totally okay. In sales, you either make a sale or you don't make a sale. The middle ground's kind of tough, but the outer ones are okay. It's okay not to make a sale, and it's obviously okay to make a sale. You need both of those. That's just life. And so win-win is like making a sale. You, you've won a relationship with this other person, this other company, and um, no deal, you walk away. It's important to, to remember that it's okay to take a no deal in a relationship if, you, if it's just not going to fit, right? I talk about when you're building strategic relationships, you want to go out and find 20 or 50 potential relationships, start them, see where they go, see if it can be good for the other uh, party and they can be good for you. And if it can, they begin to evolve into one of your strategic relationships. You don't need many strategic relationships. Five, 10 strategic relationships is a lot. That's great. Um, but you do need to start off with a lot to be able to find out which ones will end up being the win-win uh, and which ones will end up being the no deal. Let's just forget about the guys in the middle. So do me a favor in the chat, put win-win if you agree with me that federal relationships are strongest when you and I think win-win. Go ahead and put that into the chat. When we think win-win for everybody, then our relationships are going to be built the very strong foundation. Put win-win into the chat. Um, okay, so let's move on. Actually, today's a heavy water day. Let's move on to the second point of um, how to build relationships with federal buyers and ways you can think about this. Um, I got this, another one from Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey, obviously I'm a big fan. Um, and uh, so in this particular case, I if you had watched, uh, when you signed up for today's training, if you notice I had three bullets in there and I said, relationships are built, not found. And what I'm saying is you need to be proactive about re relationships, you can't be reactive. Um, you can't just wait for the relationship to fall into your lap or whatever. You have to go out and find them and then to develop them. Um, Stephen Covey said that love is a verb. And this is where I got this uh, idea that relationships are built, not found. I was going to put relationships as a verb or relationships yeah, are verbs. Um, but it was easier to say relationships are built, not found. Um, but let me tell you why Stephen Covey was saying this love is a verb and how that it re relates to relationships that we build. Um, Stephen was at a conference and talking to, no, was, he had a friend come over and he was talking to a friend. His friend was um, complaining about the state of the uh, his marriage, right? He said, the love's just gone away from my marriage. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we're just struggling. The love's gone away. What can I do? What can we do? Um, and Stephen Covey just said, love her. It's like, what? No, you don't understand. <laughs> I get it. You don't understand. The, the love's gone. We've been together 20 years and um, life just became almost mechanical and the love's just not there. You don't understand. It's not just, it's not there like it was in the beginning. We were in love and, and then we were married and we had, you know, great times. And, and then it's just kind of went away. It's not there. Stephen Covey looked at him again and said, love her. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. Um, the focus is not on us. You, what, you know, we do a date night here and there. It doesn't work, but our focus is on the kids. It's not on us. 
um, we tend to ignore each other. And Stephen Covey says, love her. This guy's getting a little tired of this thing. And Stephen goes, listen, love is a verb. It's an action word. You don't wait for love to happen in your relationship. You make it happen, right? And, and I get it. It takes work to make it happen. It takes work to make a lot of things happen. But if you take the time to actually re-engage and treat love like a verb, not like it's something you fall into, but it's something you, you uh, grow and develop, then that love will come back to your relationship and you don't have to lose that relationship. And it's the same thing with federal relationships, right? Uh, Dave Waltz is on the uh, live today. Love him, right? <laughs> love, love is a verb, right? Relationship building is that same way with federal buyers and with um, other government contractors that you work with. We can make excuses about um, federal buyers or teammates. They don't call us back. Uh, they don't respond to my email. That's okay. Things happen. Just last week, uh, um, I don't know what day it was, Wednesday or Thursday, my son fell at a pool when he was at swim class, cracked his head open, had to go to the hospital, get stitches, all the stuff. He's fine. Um, but I'm not calling back a lot of people and I'm forgetting who got back to, or reached out to me and said, Hey, Neil, I got this question or that, you know, if people aren't getting back to you. Just, you know, reach out to them, build that relationship, follow back up with me. Um, sometimes people tell me we can go weeks or months and, um, without talking to the government buyer or whoever. And I can't figure out why we don't have a good relationship, why they don't, um, why the relationship's not growing. Well, if you're not reaching out, but every um, month or two or six months, then that relationship, it's, it's like you're not feeding it. You're not giving it sun and water, et cetera. You're starving that relationship. You need to engage that relationship. Love uh, Relationships buildings are a verb, right? You need to do something in there. And um, when you think about it, right, relationships are, are built. They're not just, uh, we don't just find them. They're not dropping into our lap. Think about it like farming. Um, and I've talked about this before compared to hunting. Right. Farming is a is a verb. It's, a, it's an activity. Yes, I can think hunting might be. But when you think about people who like to hunt a deer or whatever, hunting is basically you sit and you wait and you wait for that relationship to walk by and you and you get the relationship. You shoot the deer. Right. Farming, you determine what you want. I want these crops. I want corn. I want wheat. I want relationships. OK, well, you need to prepare the land. Then you need to um, protect the land and, and uh, do whatever you do with farming. I'm not a farmer. I'm a city guy. Right. But you need to uh, do that. stuff, And then you need to harvest those relationships and then you need to get it to the market. So you're treating um, th that farming activity going from the farm to the plate, so to speak, with a lot of uh, tender care, very much a lot of activity. Um, and so farming is this verb kind of thing. Well, think of relationships building that same way. Relationship building is like farming and um, relationships take time, right? You have to do something about it. And so just keep in mind that relationships are built. They're not found. As I keep coming back and doing this uh, training every day, I'm trying to build relationships with more and more of you. Even if all I do is get to know what your business is and introduce you to somebody else or introduce somebody else to you, it's just um, awesome for me, but it takes me coming back on a regular basis. So do me a favor, put re uh, building relationships into the chat if you realize that you must build them instead of waiting for them to come to you. Building relationships, put that in if you realize that relationship building is a verb, not a, uh, not a wait and see. Okay, so we got 10 minutes left and I wanna go into this whole idea of um, nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. So when you think about relationship building, I want you to understand how much stronger you can build that relationship when people know how much you care about them. Right. Clearly, this works with my my wife and I. Of um, the more the more I'm obviously caring, the stronger our relationship's just going to get. My kids, the more I'm obviously caring, and there's many ways I can show them that I care, the stronger our relationship gets. Well, uh, federal buyers and other teammates, they're no different than um, the people in your community, in your family. They want to know that you care, and your relationship will get stronger. Right. And there's a line I like to say out there about nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. They want to hear everything you have to say after they know that you care. Um, and that's not a bad thing, right? If everybody actually acted that way, then the federal buyer is trying to show that they care about you as well by maybe doing a little research before a meeting. But we're not here to talk about them. We're here to talk about you and me. Um, so when they do know that you care, right, when somebody like John had the army knows that you care, you've done the things I'm about to recommend that you do, then they're gonna be willing to share more. They're gonna tell you more about their agency. They're gonna tell you more about opportunities that are coming out. 
uh, other teaming partners that you have are going to be willing to share more about opportunities they're pursuing or make introductions to people they know with no strings attached, right? Um, so it's important that you understand that when you go in and you start building relationships and you're aiming for that win-win relationship, it begins with letting people know that you care. And I'm going to give you three ways to show you care in a minute. But I want to talk about uh, one way that is two ways that are not uh, demonstrating it, right? They're not bad things. They're just counterproductive, if you will. The first one I don't like, uh, and, I, and I recommend you stray away from, is this whole idea of capability briefings. Um, and I don't mean five minutes, here's an introduction to my company, but capability briefings, this old school way where we were taught to have a, a big slide deck walk in and, and we have an hour meeting, we're talking for an hour. It's just talk, 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 talk. And there's, it's not helpful to anybody. It's not really helpful to you because you already know your company. And it's not overly helpful to them because you're just telling them about your company. And you might as well pick any random company out there. Um, a capability briefing, the way I would recommend you do it now, is just do five minutes when you get into a meeting. And whole separate training, I talk about use a call plan where you come in with five or 10 questions. That's where you want to go. And I'll come back to that in a second. The second thing I don't particularly like um, that people sometimes do, I sometimes do, you might sometimes do, is we um, ask too many situation questions. I talk about a sales methodology called SPIN, um, SPIN selling. It's four different question types. You can go watch the training. But the first question type, the least helpful to the federal buyer are situation questions where you're asking them factual questions. Um, you might be asking them about how many people work for them, how big is a building, what type of software they're using. These are all factual questions. They'll be happy to answer your questions within reason, but they're not helping them at all. They're just giving you information. And so it's really kind of a take, take, take. Situation questions are not bad, right? There's a right way to use them, but most of the situation questions can be researched. And if you research it, which is the first way that you can show you care, then you won't have to ask many of these questions, these factual questions, and you can dive into a deeper discussion, which I'll talk about in a minute. So one way that you can really show that you, re you care is research. And um, I've done many, many different videos, trainings on um, how you can do research, but go to their website, look at their strategic plan. Every day at eight o'clock on LinkedIn, I'm posting another strategic plan. I'm bringing this to you so that you, you know it's easier to find. Um, find their budget. I posted a lot of people's budgets, but just find your agency, your target agency's budget and read it. You'll learn a lot in there. And I don't mean every single number, every single word, but read it for the part that matters to what you're going to discuss with um, your federal buyers, the relationships that you have. Read their annual reports, which typically are about um, not last fiscal year, but the one before, because it takes a little time to get it out. But it's really recent still in the federal government world. Um, OIG reports, Office of Inspector General or GAO reports that talk about an agency and the challenges they have. And then the last thing is social media. Right now, there's all sorts of stuff being put out on social media, especially on LinkedIn, where you can learn about an agency. So that's researching an agency. Uh, the second way you can show that you care is to attend their events, right? So do me a favor, throw research into the chat. Let me know you're tracking on that for their first way. The second way is attend their events. I just said this morning that there's an Army Contracting Command um, opportunity coming up. DHS has got another vendor outreach session. Uh, Dave Waltz is in here. He might be telling you about uh, an event he has, either a bigger event or a, or a recurring event. Um, he puts it in. These are events that you can attend and care. Buyers in particular will see that you show up, that you care enough to come learn from them when they're briefing industry. That's a way to show them that you care. And then the last way to show that you care, and this is when you're in meetings, and this is uh, how you why you would use a call plan and write down five or 10 questions is you want to ask problem and implication questions, right? The idea of talking to a small business specialist tends to be around learning high level about an agency, learning about an opportunity, maybe getting an introduction, but you want to get into the program office, really diving into their specific challenges, their goals, right? What's going on? And so when you get in and you have those kind of meetings, you don't want to be talking a lot about your company. You want to be asking them problem questions. I was reading the management challenges of the agency and it was talking about this and it related to data. I'm curious about that. Can we pull a thread on that and start asking a couple of questions? Not like a detective, but just a conversation saying, tell me more about that. How do you feel about that <laughs> kind of thing? And then, so those are problem questions. You're uncovering problems. When they start talking about problems, now they know a little bit more that you care because you're trying to find out what's going on with them. In, in, instead of just prescribing your solution and product, you're trying to learn more about their problems before you say something. And then the second, uh, or excuse me, the third type of question is implication. So I said spin, situation, problem. Third one is implication. 
And implication questions are, well, if you have this problem, what, what's the consequence of that problem? The implication, who else is impacted? If your servers are down, who can't do their job because the servers are down? If they can't do their job, who can't accomplish their mission, right? There's all this consequence to a problem sometimes. And when you have questions and you have a discussion around problem and implications, um, it really helps the buyer flesh out those uh, problems, understand their requirements in more depth and allows you later to start talking about potential solutions. So those are just three examples of how you could show um, you care, research, attend their events, or ask problem and implication questions. Uh, when you're able to show you care, you're gonna shift the authority in your favor. You'll no longer be seen as like that small business to an agency, small business to a large. You'll be seen as an equal. You'll be seen maybe even higher as a trusted advisor. It doesn't make you better. It makes them looking up to you for information and advice, right? And that comes from you taking the time to care about them. So put I care in the chat if you believe it's important to uh, care about buyers before you go talk to them and show them that you care. So put I care into the chat. Um, so in this training, we talked a, uh, a lot. We talked about the um, three different things that I wanted you to pay attention to as you as you moved forward, right? Is um, just tracking on think when, when, when uh, relationships are built, not found. And then nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. So show that you care. The one way you can show that you care and one tip for you when you go away today is go download the strategic plan for your target agency. Read it. Read that thing cover to cover. The budget, you don't have to read cover to cover, but the strategic plan, it's not that long. Read it, even if it's 100 pages. Put thanks into the chat if you found value in today's training. We always appreciate that. Um, we're wrapping up January here with a BD Accelerator. So if you're interested in learning about that, it's for companies that are doing generally about a million or more um, in that world, right? Or you've done that. So reach out to me on LinkedIn if you'd like to know more about our BD Accelerator workshop. Remember, government contracting, it is not a secret. It's just a process. Part of the process is coming back for the next training. I will see you.